Night terrors are nightmares that happen during deep sleep, when the body is free to move and act out nightmares. Because of this, they can be dangerous to people who suffer from them, as well as to those who live with them in some cases. During night terrors, individuals' eyes will open and they will appear to be screaming or reacting to something that isn't real. Attempts to wake the sufferer of night terrors are not recommended, as they can cause the person having the night terrors to lash out violently. Today, I'd like to welcome Scruffle Shuffle, who's had night terrors since the age of 17. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> Wonderful. V audio's great. So, um, night terrors normally begin in childhood and decrease with age. At what age did you learn you had them? I didn't learn that I actually, I didn't know the term until I was 30. Mm -hmm. I would have very sporadic episodes here and there. They seem very random. <laughs> and how did you find out that you had them? Like, what was that experience like? So, uh, the only reason I knew of what they were is because I was acting out a dream. Um, I guess I was vacuuming in my dream, and I tripped and fell on something. I woke up on the floor, two rooms away, really confused, and I gave myself a mild concussion. Oh my god. So, you, like, you had to be rushed to the hospital? I, um, I didn't actually go to the hospital right away. Um, <laughs> I actually went to bed first because I felt okay. Mm -hmm. Once I boyfriend got me talking and he's like okay I feel okay but we should probably go to the hospital and get that checked out <laughs> mm -hmm. so uh, yeah that was going to be another follow up question so you were living with someone at the time and did he like come and find you were you like disoriented extremely I was I was very confused and he kept asking me are you okay are you okay and I was, I was getting frustrated because when I was waking up I I was so disoriented that I couldn't I couldn't vocalize anything probably due to the concussion. Wow. Um, yeah. And again, like you you mentioned to me that you had them since age seventeen, and then so how long have you had them now? And sorry, do you still have them to this day? I guess is what I want to ask. Do I still happen to what? Do you still have night terrors to this day? Yeah, it's uh, it's very random. Uh, my recent one, the last one that I had, I woke up to the boyfriend catching because I was jumping in bed. Like, he caught me in midair. Wow. <laughs> that was the most recent one you had? Yeah, that was the most recent one that I had. How long ago was that? Um, at the end of last month, Okay. I would say. How often do you have them these days? Um, sometimes once a month, sometimes less frequent, um, it doesn't seem to make any sense. Hmm. <laughs> and, and a lot of these actually, I can't help but notice, like, and you also mentioned to me that they sound kind of like sleepwalking episodes. Like it's not necessarily a nightmare dream, but you're definitely acting at your dreams. Yeah, it's not always nightmares. For me, it's either... My dreams are super normal and boring, or they're absolutely horrifying. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you also mentioned that you had sleepwalking as a kid, so you've always sort of been a deep sleep uh, dreamer. And how did you find out that you had sleepwalking? My dad told me. Uh, my dad, he caught me trying to go on the top front porch because uh, our bedrooms were on the second floor and I must have been trying to retrieve this stuffed animal that was thrown in the gutter that I, I let it get thrown in the gutter and I felt guilty about letting the toy get thrown in the gutter and I guess in my sleep I tried to retrieve it. Oh wow. Was it actually there or was that also part of the dream? It was actually there. Yeah. Oh okay. <laughs> in real life. <laughs> Were you able to actually like... Sorry? 
Was I able to actually what? Oh, sorry. I was going to say, were you able to actually, like, navigate your way to it and retrieve it in your sleep? Yeah, I was banging on the door, and my dad, like, redirected me. And then he told me about it later, but I wow. didn't know. I wouldn't know unless he told me. Wow. And uh, I'm very lucky that there's uh, a latch hook on that door. Hmm. Latch hook lock. I, that I couldn't navigate, so... <laughs> mm-hmm. that's a good thing <laughs> yeah uh yeah i mean that, that that's another thing that I'll, I'll bring up later but um like in terms of like controls that you implement uh to prevent yourself from you know getting injured actually i'll just ask you that right now since i've already said it out loud so yeah like have you ever had your parents or you intentionally you know seeing as you know you got a concussion have you ever like implemented controls to try to you know prevent that from happening um so I, I saw a sleep psychologist uh, because when they did the sleep study to find out that I have non-REM parasomnia after the concussion, um, they, um, I was suffering with insomnia a little bit because my sleep schedule got messed up after that. It's really hard to sleep during mm. those sleep studies. Um, I bet. So, uh, the sleep psychologist helped me get my sleep schedule back on track and just keeping my sleep and wake time consistent has seemed to make my night terrors and episodes less frequent. That's good. Hmm. Yeah. But in terms of like physical controls, like do you have like a, a second lock on your door or something that prevents you from, you know, going out into the world while you're asleep yeah we would do lock both uh locks on our door and when i go to bed i i shut the door i shut the bedroom door okay okay and that usually seems to stop you or have you ever opened it i don't think i've ever opened it um that's good (laughs) because i know that when the boyfriend comes in he opened it and he leaves it open (laughs) Mm. Um, he has insomnia so I can only hope that um, <laughs> I mean that's at least kind of a good combination because he'll be awake to make sure you're not uh, doing anything too dangerous <laughs> but, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, so back to the to the night terrors sorry so one common thing that I read a lot when I read about people with night terrors is they wake up screaming have you ever woken up screaming oh yes um, most of the time I just wake up sit up screaming and not even know why like wow like you you have scream yourself away and you don't even know why you don't remember you have no memory of what the dream was no memory oh wow uh Uh, except for a couple instances uh it was a night terror combined with sleep hallucinations um And this happened two nights in a row, uh, which is very unusual because it's normally like I have one and then I don't have one for a long time. Hmm. And uh, basically I I was sleep hallucinating that there was a shadow figure holding heavy furniture above its head trying to slam it down and kill me. Oh my God. And, And the second time that it happened, the boyfriend happened to come be coming in the bedroom right where I thought I saw the shadow figure standing. He's like about the same height, so yeah. I was I did not want to go back to bed. I was trying to trying to escape, but I was so tired, like I just gave up. Mhm. And this was like sleep paralysis hallucination, or was this? I guess it's hard to tell, right? Like when you're. You know, having such like vivid nightmares versus whether it's sleep paralysis and you don't really know what's reality and what isn't. Um, yeah, I think um, I've only experienced sleep paralysis two times, and my episodes weren't anything like how most people experience them. Hmm. Um, so it's mostly the night terror or hmm. acting out my dreams that I experience. Right. So you're pretty sure that that one where the shadow person was slamming something on you, that was a night terror? Yeah, with combined with sleep hallucination. Okay. Okay. Interesting. And it's interesting to think about that 
a shadow figure is a common thing that people sleep hallucinate. That is interesting. Yeah, I've actually not really thought about it. Why? Why a shadow person? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like inherently, maybe we're just like afraid of other people. But then, yeah, that's. I'm gonna have to look into that. I, I don't know if there is even an answer. That yeah, that's that's a good point. Um, is there anything else <laughs> that you do remember, like in terms of a night terror dream, like the content of the dream? Are there any others other than that one that you remember? Um, I know. It's when I experienced uh, a brief episode of sleep paralysis. It's, I was having a nightmare that I had before. I knew it was going, and I was banging on the basement window in my nightmare, trying to wake myself up, like trying to escape. And I could, it worked. I woke myself up, and I could feel my body there. <laughs> but I, I was so tired and. I wanted to stay awake because I didn't like where the nightmare was going. Hmm. That I just had no choice but to fall back asleep. And were you in your bed when this was happening, or yeah. like it, like in real life? Yeah. Okay. I was in my bed. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but, but yeah, I was wondering if maybe you were actually outside, like banging on the glass. But yeah, no. Oh I, no. Yeah. Okay. No, it's, it's just like it was like. I, I was aware of the fact that I was dreaming, but mm -hmm. <laughs> instead of like how most people say, oh, in vivid dreaming, you can tr control, I, I didn't think that. I just like, okay, I need to get out of this. That's a really <laughs> freaky dream though. Like, could you, could you actually see yourself in the nightmare, like through the window? The sleeping version like, of you? Um, There's a lot of yous to keep track of, so it's kind of, you know, Difficult to make sure we're on the same page, but yeah, you in the dream, looking through the window, could you see yourself in the dream in the bed? Is what I'm saying. Um, not quite. Though the first uh, sleep paralysis episode was like an out of body experience. This, the second one, this one that I'm talking about now, that one, it wasn't so much that I could see myself, but that I could feel my body. Oh, <laughs> interesting. Like, I woke myself up banging on the basement window actually worked. It got, got me to wake up, but I couldn't move. Wow. <laughs> and do you remember what it was that you were trying to wake yourself? Like, what was the thing that you wanted to get out of the nightmare from? It was being trapped in a torture house, basically. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, so, wait, so in the dream, had you already escaped the torture house, then run to your house, banged on the glass? I knew, I, I, I was familiar with building itself. I, I dreamed of that building before, I guess. Hmm. I was like, I don't like this. I don't like where this is going. This is going. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, that's really, really freaky. Um, so when you wake up, do you usually feel confused, still frightened? Or does it, I, I mean, I guess if you don't remember it, then you would feel just kind of confused or yeah it's for the most part it's confused but sometimes it's a combination of confused and horrified hmm okay uh, you... sorry yeah <laughs> yeah that's pretty much all i had to say about that oh, okay <laughs> all right um also you mentioned that by you know going to sleep at a regular schedule that you can kind of that you can reduce the frequency of them. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you remember what may have like triggered them in the first place? Like when you were I 17? Have... Um, I do think it's hereditary because mm. I asked my aunt about my uncle who had Parkinson's disease. Uh, his Parkinson's disease seemed to pick start his night terrors and sleep paralysis so mm. it might be also a combination of hereditary and other health problems that i have so I see. um maybe it has to do with heart transplant that i had <laughs> mm. was it was that when you were a teenager 
Yes. Oh, okay. Interesting. That yeah. is really yeah. I, I like I haven't ever heard anything about that, but I wonder if that's like a known phenomenon, like it, whether you know transplantation can cause like changes to dreaming or nightmares, um, or yeah, other like yeah. parasomnias. And I, I wonder, know there's a lot of uh, theories about um, transplant recipients picking up personality traits of so the donor, <laughs> mm-hmm. or memories maybe, you know. There's yeah. We don't there's, we don't know everything there is to know about you know organs and in, in terms of you know like what you know memory they may have. They say that the there's like quite a neural network in the gut alone. Like when you say you have a gut feeling, that's kind of an old expression, but it's based on some truth. Like there's actually a lot of neurons within the gut, and the, you know some the intestines. I mean specifically, and these things may have a memory that we're actually not even aware of. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because I, uh, I know that I woke up craving m M&M cookie. Um, but the, the, that's the one noticeable thing that I noticed different, uh, after the heart trip. So, uh, it might, might have affected me in other ways, too, other than just waking up craving m M&M cookie. <laughs> I had not, I had not thought about those, ever, until I woke up from my heart transplant. <laughs> that's really interesting. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna actually. I'm gonna have to do some more reading about that. That's really interesting. Um, and you mentioned that you've got a concussion. Have you ever hurt yourself other than that, or hurt someone else while in a night terror? Um, I know. I don't know if I hurt the boyfriend, but I know I flew out of bed thinking that there were basically spikes and ran down under the bed, and I'm trying to shake the boyfriend awake. I was thinking, oh my gosh, he died. Like, why is he moving? <laughs> oh wow! But um, yeah, that's uh, the the concussion is the only time I hurt myself. And shaking the boy, trying to shake the boyfriend awake or alive was the one episode that I can recall where I was affecting somebody else. Mm-hmm. Aside from uh, you know, being a nuisance. <laughs> Fair enough. And has he ever told you? Sorry, I got a cough again. Uh, I was going to ask, has he ever told you that you've done something that kind of creeped him out while you were asleep? Um, I think he finds them more annoying than creepy. <laughs> okay. All right. Like, like, like what? W- what has he said that annoyed him? Because he'll he'll be um, almost asleep, and that <laughs> I'll be doing my weird. Now I'm on parasomnia thing. <laughs> tell me, tell me what that thing is. <laughs> what, what's that? Uh, sorry, tell me about the the re, the non rem parasomnia thing. So, it's talking or like thrashing about in bed. Hmm. Okay. Or hmm. waking up, sitting up, screaming. Right. And and you mentioned that you believed that it was partly inherited. Um, yeah. So do you have a, a parent that has night terrors? Or? My uncle definitely had a sleep paralysis episode and night terrors. Okay. And um, my aunt, uh, since my uncle was deceased, um, I was asking my aunt about it. She thinks that Parkinson's seem to bring about the problems with his sleep. I see. Okay. You ever hear any creepy stories from from that? Um yeah, I think um it was kind of horrifying when she was telling me about how once his Parkinson's medicine would wear off, he'd be almost asleep and that's that's when his sleep paralysis episode would kick in and his body would basically seize up. Oh no. So it's uh it sounded miserable. Yeah. Hmm. And other than kind of getting your sleep schedule in check, 
and you know we we already talked about the the physical controls but is there any other treatment that you've gotten for it that you found has helped um keeping um when i eat consistent um when i have my coffee consistent <laughs> uh try to be active and avoid naps hmm naps eh uh yeah <laughs> avoid naps yeah interesting so when you have naps you have more frequent night terrors it's uh it's more likely to mess up my circadian rhythm and that's more likely to cause more frequent i see episodes okay um do you think that your night terrors have inspired anything in your personal or professional life like do you do anything differently because you have them you think um, not really. <laughs> okay, it's just enough. <laughs> Other than just being more aware of being consistent with <laughs> not eating too late before I go to bed. Or... Fair enough. Is there anything else that you think that the world ought to know about night terrors? Um, they're different than nightmares. <laughs> I know a lot of people seem to get those. Mm. Um. Yeah, we don't get those confused on this channel, but but that's good. <laughs> but that's that's the main thing is you just wish that people knew that like, hmm, well, like, I mean, literally you're free to move during them because they're happening happening during deep sleep, and it's not, you know, just like your average nightmare that we all have. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, thanks for coming and talking to me talking to me today today oh my god i can't talk uh if you we I don't, I don't have a big audience but if you have a shadow or anything that you'd like to uh promote feel free to do so now i have nothing in mind <laughs> all right fair enough well thanks so much again for coming on all right thanks for talking with me all right have a good one Bye.